Thank you so much for joining us, everybody. This is uh, this is Gina, and she's a professional ballerina, yeah. which is a definite difference for us from the normal narrative that we talk about here. But this is all part of our Mental Health Awareness Week, and we wanted you to come and join us and tell us all about what it is, what it means to be a professional ballerina, and the stresses and pressure of of that, and maybe dispel a few myths that it's um, easy or not not easy, but I don't know, all about the flamboyance, but there's a lot of hard work that goes into it, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, thank you for having me. Um, it's, uh, I think what's hard is you start off quite young and the discipline starts from day one. Um, I was really lucky that I like discipline, so it was always easy for me to kind of go into that routine. But I think from an early age, you sort of miss out on parties and, and gatherings and things that didn't really bother me, but it was a big change I think for other people and, and is a reason why people dropped out after a while. Um, so I think that is one of the challenges. Another challenge is um, I think it's just long hours even at work now we have 12 hour days um, and you get home at 11.30 and you wake up again at 7 and you're ready for a new day and not only is it about the show it's more about the rehearsals during the day so we rehearse from 12 to 5.30 and have class at 9.30 till, till 12. So basically we're at work all day, going to, going to bed, sleeping for seven hours, waking up, doing the, doing the same thing again and again and again. And I think that's what's harder, not just the physical aspect, but the mental aspect. And is the discipline, do you get a day off? How, how does it work? Yeah, up? so you get Sundays off um, and sometimes Saturdays. Um, and then we have four weeks off in summer and a week off in Christmas, and that's basically it. But the discipline on those days when you're when you're not actually focused on you call it a job. Yeah. They're, they're, I want to dig into that. So you call it a, you call it a job because I think you you are prof, you, this is a professional this is your career mm. but it was also a career that you were destined to have from the age of. I what started age? when I was four years old, and I guess I thought I wanted to be a professional dancer when I was ten, eleven, which sounds very young, but I never. I never wanted to be anything else than a dancer, so it was a very natural way of me to think and to be. Um, but it definitely does feel like a job. I mean, I love my, my job and I love dancing and it makes me so happy, but it definitely does feel like a job because it is tiring and I would probably still do it if I didn't get any money, but we do need money, so it does feel like a job, yeah. So you were, you were 10 when you realised that this was going to be your career. Yeah. Probably. Did you feel like... It was a. Do you, do you feel pressure to make that choice at that point? No, that's a very young no, age. No, 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 you not loved at all. It. Yeah, exactly. So because I loved it and it was my passion, I didn't want to do anything else. And my parents were super supportive to to push me whatever way I wanted to go. And and I think they realized once I went to international summer schools and sort of did competitions and and worked with a company in Norway, I realized and they realized that this is actually possible and that I could make it as a professional dancer, because I think it gets to a point where you're 15, 16, and you start searching for a job or an upper school, and, and going into a professional career as a freelancer is really hard in the ballet world. So the fact that I managed to get a full-time job was a blessing, and I'm really lucky and fortunate. But I think, yeah. I, what it, percentage of people, I guess, the pressure that comes from it, 10, you decide this is what you want to do. Mm. It feels like that's something that, of course, you enjoy it. So it's an easy choice to make at that point. Yeah. What level of pressure is there between that point and 15, 16, where it starts to become more of a professional thing that you're doing? It, I guess a lot of people drop out of that in that age range. Yeah, exact, exactly. So it's, again, because of parties and, and wanting more time with your friends, that is mostly the, the main reason that people drop out or they're not interested anymore. And I didn't ever feel like there was a transition between, okay, now I'm taking it serious and now I'm not taking it serious. There was always taking it serious for me. I think from day one, I've always taken it serious and I've wanted to become better and sort of have that motivation to want to achieve as much as possible. And I think for me, the younger, or for everyone, the younger you are, the more you push in a younger age, the easier it is, the older you get, because you have that ingrained discipline and technique in your body for life. 
Does it ever feel like pressure? In what way? So when you're pressure to week after week after week, does it ever feel like heavy? Like I've hard? I've had enough of this, no, or never, you've maintained really. that motivation? Yeah, I think motivation is interesting because I've always felt motivated, but we also in our company we're surrounded by such talented dancers, and half of them are my best friends. So I'm. It's like my second family, and because they are, they motivate me because they are motivating, because they're inspirational to me, and I can get better through them as well. So I think that motivates me, and also the fact that we always have different rep um, throughout our year. We have 11, 12 programs a year, so not only is the show one, one side of it, we also have rehearsals where we rehearse four or five different programs during the day, so we're constantly challenged. So it's not, wise, yeah, okay. technique wise, you know, our body challenge, we have different challenges with our body, we have to do different roles, you have to, have to remember things and all of these things are, are motivation enough to keep going. On top of that, I love what I do, so I don't And think the people you work with, everybody's in the same situation, everybody's coming together for that moment, is, is, that, a, yeah. is that helpful? I mean, I think competition is, is an aspect of our art form. But I think the, the trick is to look at it as healthy competition because it's inevitable that there is going to be a competition in our company or in, in ballet or in sports. There's always going to be competition. But I think if you see it as healthy, it is the best way to look at it and know that that person will only help you develop and become better and become stronger instead of thinking, you know, oh, they're going to take I my job. Exactly. And sort of comparing yourself for such individual people and it is another thing that's different to sports and, and ballets that's you know we don't have the fastest runner or the highest jumper you are who you are and if somebody likes you then great if somebody caught if somebody casts you in this ballet then great because you were wanted but then there's other ballets that suit me more and that I'm more wanted in so I think looking at it as healthy competition is for me the best way so you talked about discipline. I, I, I want to dig in a bit more to that. So what does it look like when you're preparing, you're getting into the zone? What do you have a routine that you go through? Is there certain techniques that you follow in order to maintain that focus and that, and that discipline? Yeah, I think it's very much depending on the role. If it's a role that I've done a lot before, I, I know what to expect on stage. But when there's a role that I haven't done before, I like to listen to music. I like to listen to the music of the vibe of what I'm doing on stage, if that makes sense. If it's a calm role, I like to listen to calm music. I feel like already then I'm 50% there. Um, and then muscle memory, I think, is a really important thing for me. It almost feels like if you rehearse enough in the studio and you have enough muscle memory you can almost be on stage in sort of an airplane mode where you just you can let go your muscles your body does what you know it should do and you can just live in the moment it sounds really weird no that's that's everything that's, that we're about yeah you know being in flow that's that's yeah, everything we're exactly. about um do you think of it like that do you think about it as being in the zone in that moment yeah so for me like the state of flow is sort of like a being in, the ele in, an, in my element, being in the zone, where you push yourself to your limits, but you know where your limit is, and you just feel most yourself and most comfortable. Effortless? Or are you mm. feeling like you're at the edge of your Not, performance window? Yeah, I, I think edge, edge of my performance window. I don't, I don't think effortless because it is hard, but often I go off stage and I don't know what happened. It's so sort fascinating. Of like I was in the moment and then I was out. Are you aware of the of the audience? In a good way. I don't think I've ever seen the audience as a bad thing for me personally. And I know a lot of people struggle with audience and sort of the pressure of having people watch. But for me, it's just more comforting because I know people are watching you, hopefully in a positive way, and just engaging into you and in seeing your life. Come alive, if that makes sense. 
Yeah, it does it's make never sense. Been, it's never been an issue for me having an audience. I like it. It feels warmer. Is that, for, is that the same for everybody or is that something that you think you've... Mm, I think everyone looks at it a, a little bit different. I think some people get really nervous on stage or, or, or nervous that they're going to fall or stressed that the audience don't like it. But I think if you think of it as, you know, it's just a... I don't know how many, 2,500 people who just look at you hopefully in admiration. It feels like a different feeling coming on stage because you know it's just a warm feeling and instead of having no audience it feels warmer having people if not it just feels like a cold black room but knowing that, that you can see the edge of the pe of people's heads in do the you, audience it's, it's really nice do you when you're training yeah do you feel like you bring a different level when it's a performance versus training or is the mm. training at the at the same level I, I tend to want to push the hardest in rehearsals so that I can enjoy the performance. But you always want oh, to... Oh, interesting. Yeah, but you always want to do your best on stage as well. So I guess you always try and push as much as possible. And if, for example, you're tired in the studio, the, I feel personally the audience help you push lift. even more and lift, exactly, lift the show. Yeah. How has it been over the last year or so mm. where you haven't been able to to perform for the most part in front of that audience mm. as it felt like something's been missing? How have you channeled that? Because it's your outcome of all your hard work, right? That mm. performance. Yeah. So what have you channeled your energy towards? It was horrendous, I have to say. It wasn't fun at all. In the beginning, we were actually just before lockdown, we were dancing, we were doing the Swan Lake, which is a really hard ballet. But on top of that, we were rehearsing four other ballets, so it was non-stop, go, go, go. And then from one day to the other, we were just sent home, and I was sat in my little living room, not really sure what to do. And in the beginning, I loved it because I needed a break, and so my body was thankful. The second week, I, I was still in a good place. And then suddenly realizing this isn't going to just be a three-week lockdown, I, I started panicking and worrying, how long is this going to go on? Without sounding cliche, you almost feel like you've lost purpose in life just because I do ballet every day, all day. So suddenly you don't really know what to do with yourself and you're worried about a, a virus that nobody really knows what it's about. And, and I think personally, I had a really nice season and, and I was you know, excited to finish it off in a, in a good way. And then it just shutting down was a shock. When does the season run? From, from summer to summer, so okay, yeah, um, from August to July, I think. Yeah. Um, so we were almost there. We had a couple of more productions to go, um, and then it was just at home. And we started a couple of weeks later. We started doing classes at home in the living room, and I think I've never felt so weird ever. I mean, via I was, a Zoom call or something. Yeah, via Zoom, and and I think I've been injured before and it lasted six six months or so and as much as you're not dance dancing you're still around you you go to the gym or you have rehab sessions you know you see people and and i need stimulation from people from from dancing from music from just engaging with people having none of that made me feel it just was so weird it was how did you maintain that discipline because it's obviously you know your job and your nature of that coming naturally to you mm -hmm. uh, almost got completely turned on its head in that moment. So mm -hmm. how did you keep the discipline of eating the right foods and you know training however you could? Mm -hmm. Because otherwise you're going to come back to it and you could, that could have been weeks or mm -hmm. days yeah, later yeah, yeah. and you didn't know. So yeah, what so did you do to navigate that moment? So we, I think, were off. We were back at work four or five months later. Um, and in the beginning, like I said, I thought it was just going to be a three week break. So I took it completely off, not knowing this was going to be inevitable. And I think if I, if I knew we were going to have five months off, I would have continued dancing in the living room full out just so it wasn't a big shock coming back because it was a huge shock. I think for most dancers as well. I, I mean, I tried to do classes in, in my living room. We did some Pilates sessions. We had a we have a great setup at the at the Opera House, but I also tried to run with my boyfriend in the park, which was awful. I'm never gonna do that again. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely tried once and never again. But it was just 
trying to keep yourself stimulated and moving in, in the most a healthy way possible but I think also not being too hard on yourself and knowing that everyone is in the same position calm down it's only you know a little break it will be fine is the best way to think about it because if not you get a nervous breakdown yeah and mentally okay. as well the stimulation and the focus yeah, was, it was a challenge there, well it's a completely different cha challenge because instead of having the challenge of needing to perform to be perfect to constantly be peaking it was a challenge of how am i i don't know this way of life i don't know how to live and it feels like i know what a four week holiday feels like but i don't know what a four month break feels like where you can't even walk to a shop because it's closed or you can't go to a restaurant or you can't see your family you're you're on your own or with someone but you're stuck at home and so i think it felt I think that was the hardest part for me, trying to to tell myself it's okay to have a day off, it's okay to take a break. Yeah, yeah. I think um, a lot of people struggled even more so when the second lockdown happened mm -hmm. because we'd almost had a taste of going back to reality and now mm -hmm. we're... Was it the same for you? Was it challenging in a different way or was it yeah. just like a same repeat? I think for me it was actually easier. I know a lot of people, I have colleagues as well who said it was harder the second time around, but for me I knew I knew what to expect. I knew that this was going to be one of those not sure how long, so let's just keep in shape from day 1 instead of taking day time off. It was easier for me to kind of stay in shape. We'd already had a couple of shows before that locked the second lockdown, so I felt like I had done a good job and I felt sort of I guess stimulated enough to, to keep me going um, but it's true some of my colleagues said that the second lockdown was much worse also because there was no sunshine and suddenly you know you, you go into this December and it's it's hard it's really hard but I enjoyed I mean I didn't enjoy any of the lockdown but I found it easier in the second lockdown the second to, time yeah. to deal with the situation yeah um changing from lockdown and disruption to routines and so forth mm -hmm. um as you're building up to a performance yeah uh, what does that look like take us through the process and the uh the way that you tackle that physically mentally as a team mm -hmm. etc so we have four weeks usually to prepare for a new show um we'll be rehearsing for four weeks and i think the most important thing for me, preparation-wise, is having good point shoes because it's sort of like an extended part of your body, I guess. And if I have a bad shoe, it feels like you're constantly fighting with yourself because you're off balance. You don't know how to, you know, get on your shoe. And and for me personally, finding the right shoe is is the only way forward. Do you feel like you're completely out of your zone if the shoe? Because it's your connection exactly. to the to the surface, right? Exactly. So it's like your own. It's like an extended part of your body. So if you don't have a good shoe, you feel out of your. You don't feel like you belong to that shoe. And for me, it takes about six days to break in a. I mean, or up to a week to break in a shoe. You you get it, without having anything done to it. It's handmade. Uh, I'll then sew it. I will break it in a little bit, slack it, which is like a hardening. I think it's a floor hardener. I'm not quite sure <laughs> what it actually is, but I use it for my point shoes. Then I use it, then I darn it, then I break it in again, then I shellac it again to have it the perfect mold for my feet and for the particular dance I'm doing. So if it's a dance where I need it for three hours, I want to make it harder, or if I need a really soft one because I'm not going on point too much. So I think that is more my own struggle and I've always struggled with point shoes my whole career. That's fascinating. So you've yeah. got this kind of relationship with a, sh a shoe 100%. and you get a new, sh a new shoe, for a new pair so, for each yeah, performance? You, yeah, so we, the dancers don't pay for their shoes at my company, which I'm really privileged for. But um, it depends on the show but sometimes I can I only use one pair a day or I can I can use one pair for seven shows it just depends on how much I'm dancing how the shoe is reacting to my show how the floor feels how much I've darned how much I've shellacked it I mean it's a 
it's a whole saga. <laughs> Do you a, feel like a lot of the focus is channeled through that? Because he's got like almost mm-hmm. a little mini, a, a routine of, yeah, yeah, you know, like a superstition. Is it as far as a superstition in the way that you would approach it? I guess everyone has their own routine of how they prepare their shoes. But for me, it is, it's not really a superstition. It's more like my way of getting ready for the show. Um, but yeah, for me, if I have a good shoe, I have a good show. Obviously, that's a strap line. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you have a good shoe, you have a good, you show. Have a good show. Obviously, if you have a, a bad shoe, you can still have a good show or, or vice versa. But I think just it definitely helps me mentally knowing that the shoe is fine. But I will have small worries during shows. I wonder if my ribbon is out. I wonder if my elastic will snap. I wonder if and those thoughts can almost be overwhelming when on stage, when you want to focus on other things. So for me, knowing that my shoe will be safe and fine is is almost my biggest worry or hmm. my biggest you describe thing. it as a worry so does it does it dominate your thinking or um i wouldn't say it dominates my thinking because when i'm on stage i'm sort of in my element like i said it's it's i don't really know what's going on on stage because i'm doing what i'm most comfortable in but at the same time, I'm aware of my shoes and I'm aware of it being slippery or feeling slippery or, or I feel my, li- my ribbon is coming undone, things like that. I'm, I'm very hyper aware of what's happening around me. But at the same time, I'm in my element and I'm just doing my thing in my zone, enjoying every minute. And you enjoy it you, when, when you're performing, because I think some people, when they're at the pinnacle of the performance, mm-hmm. maybe they don't enjoy that moment, but you... Yeah, I love it. That's the only reason I'm dancing. I mean, it's way too hard for me if I wasn't enjoying the shows. So 100% I enjoy the shows the most. How is it feeling to you after a big performance? It's gone incredibly well. Um, how, how do you recover, bring, the, bring that adrenaline down and prepare for what's next? Is it does it take some time to switch off again and relax definitely i think i mean i feel sorry for the people around me because i love chatting and i love getting my energy out because you are filled with adrenaline so all you want to do is get it out in some way and and it isn't an issue until you have an important show the next day and it's almost worse then because you know you have to sleep you know you have to wind down so that you can excel again the following day But I think what I've learned is to just embrace the adrenaline and embrace the not able to wind down as fast as I want to and just, you know, have a snack or a meal, talk to friends or talk to my boyfriend. And and then slowly but surely you do manage to rest. But it's mad. You you sit on the tube and you, you put music on just to keep sort of the adrenaline going. And it's just... I don't, I don't know how to explain it, how how you feel after a show, if, especially if the show is good and it's a feel good show, it's indescribable. And if it's a sad one, you actually end up being quite sad. You carry the for emotion. For the rest of the evening, yeah. And you talk about music, so what are you listening to? What, what gets you into the zone and then helps you relax? Um, it depends. I, if I'm sort of in a calm mood, I love listening to Max Richter uh, or, or James Blake or Frank Ocean. Um, and if I want something more vibey, I like listening to Rosalia. I don't know if you know her. No. Um, yeah, but I mean, I love... What's her style? Uh, sort of like reggaeton, Spanish, hip hop Oh, wow. Weird. It's I'm cool. Check that you out. Should, yeah, you yeah. should listen to her. Yeah. But it depends on my vibe. I mean, I think music is so important in people's lives. I think it stimulates people. It awakens people. It brings back memories. I mean, I, I, sometimes I listen to, to a song and I feel like I'm back in Norway, 10 years old, dancing with my friends in the living room. I think it's just amazing how unique music can make you feel or how emotional it can make you. And I think it's something that will be with us for forever. If there's a show and you particularly like or dislike the music, it, does that happen where you feel like really connected to the soundtrack of that particular show, but not so much this one? Yeah, I mean, I, there's obviously music I prefer or, or 
or enjoy dancing more to, but I don't really dislike anything I've done on stage, music-wise, thank God, um, because I think every composer has his or her own, I don't know, elements that, that are nice and challenging in, in its own way. Um, but I think I'm, I guess, quite easy going with music. I like figuring out different types of music, or I like, for example, Stravinsky's complicated counts and, and how we need to adapt to him when on stage. So I think, yeah, I, I think I, I like all types of music on stage. Obviously, they're mainly classical. Um, so thank God I like classical music. <laughs> <laughs> when you're performing, it's with a live orchestra. When yeah. you're practicing, it's, it's just a piano. Yeah. So how does that, how does the elevation of that live performance of a full orchestra with all of the vibrations and, yeah, you know, that... It's mad. It definitely brings it to the next level, I think, because you, you feel like your choreography comes alive, your dancing comes alive as well, because it's not only through a piano, it's through a, a whole orchestra. So 100%, I, I think it brings the standard as well up because you feel that extra push that extra with an audience with an orchestra is always better what happens when the show hasn't quite gone as you wanted or do, do you labor on that do you feel you know does it worry you does it dominate your thinking or are you able to overcome that quite quite easily and just put that down to the fact that it's a job and sometimes it doesn't go as well as you would have liked it to I think obviously you take it personal or you, you take it to heart, you know, it's a privilege to be dancing on the Opera House stage and and to go on tour and have all these opportunities. But I do think at the end of the day, it's only ballet. It's, you know, we're still healthy, move on. You know, I, I understand that people have bad days and I think it's really important to have bad days because then you realize that you also can have good days. But I think to to sort of wallow in your own sorrow for more than necessary is a sad thing for so you channel it you channel it in a positive I, yeah in a positive. 100%. i mean i wouldn't channel it into a positive thing i think definitely feel what you want to feel and then get over it move on new new start new n new chapter yeah don't think about it too much because life is too short to be dwelling on all the negative things that are happening in your life you know yeah the um before we kind of raise the raise the atmosphere again, talk mm -hmm. about the lowest points for you or for friends and colleagues um, mm. in terms of injuries mm. and how that plays out, you know, physically but also mentally. Has that been something you've suffered from or you've seen people go through, and, and how's that really affect things? Mm. I think um, injuries are always a thing nobody wishes on anybody, just because it does stop your career from continuing. But I think I'm someone who always tries to look at the positive side of things. And I was injured. I had bone bruising in my knee for six months. And the day I got back fully, I landed from a jump and broke my toe. And I think probably breaking my toe was more of a challenge than actually being off with my knee because, again, I was back in, in a cast in bed. Um, but I think you have to look at things positively if not you will end up just continuing in this vicious cycle of just feeling sorry for yourself and I think I did come back stronger mentally and physically because you can do so many things that aren't physically you can see you know we have an incredible team at the Opera House we have psychologists and they do help you come back stronger the route is that side of the training customized to the individual I didn't realize it's psychologists Yes, yeah, yeah. so we have an incredible healthcare team where they have we have physios, masseuses, Pilates trainers, personal trainers, uh, psychologists, nutritionists, and you can choose. Obviously, you'll get a rehab program, and you can choose if you want to see the psychologist or not. Um, but I chose to see her just to see what would come out of it, and she really did help me in the sense of you know you can do so much with your brain. <laughs> Yeah. Like the mental side of it is almost just as big as the physical side. Yeah. And I think, you know, sort of believing in yourself is the biggest thing for me as well. Because how do you expect somebody to believe in you if you don't even believe in yourself? How are you meant to portray confidence if you, if you have no confidence in yourself? 
And I think it's one of those things I always try and, and keep in my mind, you know, to believe in yourself, you know, stay happy, stay positive, stay motivated, and, and stimulate other people so that they want to spend time with you. And don't be that person that brings everybody down because there's no point. Life is too short to be like focusing on the negative or, you know, obviously injuries are an, a, horrible th a horrible thing, but I think at the end of the day, I felt personally I came back stronger, so why see it as a negative? Yeah, That's a, it's a fantastic positive outlet that you mm -hmm. have. Um, and let's keep on that theme before we wrap up here. Mm -hmm. what, what does the year ahead look like? We've emerged hopefully from the last lockdown that we will experience of, of that magnitude. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully audiences will be returning and new shows will be put on and you'll be you know, working every day with your colleagues and friends are you excited about it what's to come yeah 100 percent. i think i'm actually excited to feel really exhausted which is a weird thing to say because i think a year ago i wouldn't have said that <laughs> interesting um, but we are opening in may uh so i'm excited to have that feeling of doing shows and not just having i think during lockdown we had one or or two shows and it did feel different to having shows almost every day because there's so much pressure put on this one show and, and we filmed it as well because there was an audience and there was no audience. So I think having that repetitiveness and having continuous shows is a much better routine for us dancers because it doesn't feel like that whole show, your whole life depends on that one show. Um, but yeah, next year I think is going to be super sick. I think we have a lot of things planned ahead and I hope it all, I hope this lockdown or this pandemic can end and that we can get back to normality. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for being here with us. It's an Thank absolute you. privilege to Thank have you. spoken with you and hear everything about um, what you do and maybe dispel a few, a few uh, misconceived ideas about the profession of, of being a ballet dancer. And we really enjoy your positive energy as well. Thank Fantastic. you. Thank you Thanks so much, so much for having me. Cheers. <laughs>